Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. All right, just doing a little bit of um, testing. Messing around with... Screw you. Stop blinking. Piece of shit. Thank you. Um, just testing out some of the features and working on a few just to see if I like them. Try to get them streamlined and working correctly. And as terrible as it sounds... A couple of days worth of work on version 974,312 of the um, the current version. I've decided to stop working on it and just focus in on features. It's too easy to get wrapped up in cool stuff with all the the asset packs and all the the other stuff going on. So I have decided to just stop, go back to basics, and do like I should be doing, and actually create things. Um, still need to do a lot of fixing on these. Um, warped player, I don't like. Um, that's going to go back out again. The send in jail, release jail, it gives an error, but it still works perfectly fine. Um, going on duty, off duty, those are fine. Um, what I'm wanting to do right now is set up a, a team system. And for right now, just a regular teleporter. Very simple. You've seen me do these a hundred times. Um, all you do is you just walk over and then teleport you to a new location. In this case, it just goes from one room to the next. But what I actually want to do is um, change this out and or just make a, a different pair so with the uh, the teleporter all it's doing is it's only working if the player steps on it it sets the destination destination is exposed so you can actually um, uh, change that whenever you put it into the map and wasn't sure if I needed the, uh, the starting location or not but went ahead and put that in there anyway but um, this is the the majority of what it is. It's just a, a simple cube with a, an entry point. Like I said, you've seen me do these before. And I'm getting ready to create a, another couple. So inside this, and this is based off my simple multiplayer team template. I have green, blue, red. I have some materials in here that I've already created. And I'm going to utilize those. Um, they're very simplistic. They just get the job done. Um, to keep it simple for right now, I'm going to use the red and green. So what I'll do here is I will create a new blueprint. Actor. Uh, green team it's a teleporter blueprint thingy uh, so this is going to be green team so we're going to add a component of a cube we'll do point 0.1 for the height change the material to where is my green I got a lot of crap in here. Uh, no. No, I think I called it grass. Yeah, play grass. Let's, um... Give it a name that I can find easier. So green, we're going to add a box collision entry point, I'm sort of giving it a name, just for the giggles, um, base pad, and the entry point, we're going to change the size, 1.5, 1 1.5, and 0.5.
plenty big enough. All I'm going to do is duplicate this and then just change the name of the material. Um, and we don't need to do that stuff. We will add event, begin overlap, and we need our player. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to create your team and it will set you on a team based on the color and I'm gonna have to create some new materials for the player but we'll do that in just a few moments alright this is an older version so it doesn't have all the all the cool fancy stuff in here just yet few things but not much uh, first thing we need is team But how do I want to do the team? For now, and I'm sure I'll change this probably a half dozen times. Um, team one and two. Default, we don't care about. We're just going to set it as one. And. Custom event client green team. And I'm just going to go ahead and multicast and replicate because we're going to be changing our, our skeletal mesh. And unfortunately, I need to go ahead and take care of that. Alright, so we just got the blue. Um, we're going to need two. I'm going to do this as individual um, meshes and then we'll call this SK Green. Go to our materials. We will duplicate this one. M underscore Green T. Go to our body color. We're going to create a green skin. And just save it up here. You know, that's good enough. Now, the next thing we need to do is the body. Um, do we need to rename that? M underscore green logo. Then we need to do the body. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate that. M underscore green. Let's abbreviate it so it's the same body. Go into this one. We don't care about you compiling your shaders. You're just going to slow me down. Go to body color. Green. Okay. Save. How are we doing this evening? Just quick creating my meshes for uh, two different teams. Green team and a red team. Come on. You can do it. Move faster. Got too tied up with all the different assets and was losing focus on what I was doing. So we'll do the same thing. We'll duplicate. We'll call this M underscore red underscore logo. Go to our body color. Red. Okay. So if you can't click on that, then just check in that checkbox, and it'll let you do that. Then if you're on the body, yep. body texture or material, I'm just going to duplicate that. Call that M underscore red body. Go into that. 
scroll, go to body color, select your default value, click on your color, bang. Um, I might should have created my own material for that. Um, we'll see. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Hurry up and save, you piece of shit. Wasting my damn time. It takes longer to do this and wait for this than to do the, the rest of what the hell I'm trying to do. Alright, mesh. Go into our green. Change it out. Green body. And green logo. That's fine. We'll duplicate SK underscore red. Red body. Yeah, that's fine. And red logo. So by setting it up to do skeletal meshes, whichever one we use will get the correct mesh already because or, or material because it's assigned already to the mesh. So we've got our blue, green, red. Um, we'll probably want yellow and other things later just for NPC testing. Usually use NPCs as a yellow color, um, green and red for team colors. So with this we're setting our replication here and we'll get our team And keep it simple, equal, if it's equal to one. And I've been stacking also, just trying to keep things compact, clean, and neat-ish. So we'll do branch node, connect you, and you. So what we're going to do is use the, um, essentially the teleporter pad is going to assign you your team based on which pad you use to enter the uh, the match or the arena in this case for a team based event um, you could just use as we're doing already if you just use the normal entry as soon as you go in here you be in your, your combat mode do your thing or whatever mode you're selecting and then whenever you leave you go back to your regular and it'll actually change your your mesh based off of what you're actually doing so that's what we're doing here is um, we are checking to see if our team is equal to one if it is so then we're going to get a reference to our mesh and set skeletal mesh and we're going to change that to green so this is replicated so that it will be seen correctly between characters um, I don't like how this looks it looks terrible I'm not going to focus on the looks and focus on the functionality so when we run this event we're going to change our mesh to green essentially um, just to make sure we're we're clicking, we'll test it out here with um, custom event. Go green team, and this is going to be switch as authority, and the authority is going to be client. Green team. And we will actually cast to player underscore base, which is my player character. And we are going to go green team. And we also want to 
make this work as a teleporter as well. So let's go ahead and get variable destination. We'll expose it. And it's going to be a vector compost and save. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and steal the coordinates from here. I'm going to copy that and then we're going to drop our green one in. Right click and paste. So in theory what should happen now is once I go in here it sets our team. Now we need to go ahead and tell it to, to teleport. So that's just going to be Set actor location target is who the hell stepped on it. Destination gets plugged into here and it's a teleport. So now in theory walk over it and poof we're now in the uh, the green team. Now, what we'll end up having to do here is whenever we teleport back, we're going to have to have a new function to get us back here out of the arena area and back to our regular mesh. Um, so probably the easiest way to do that is to Let's go ahead and ditch this one and this one. Because I have the coordinates saved on that one right there, if that's good. So, save all, save selected. Once we get there, we're on the green team. But then when we go back, we're going to need another um, portal. So, let's go ahead and. create our functionality for the red team. So we'll just do another one. Custom event. Client red team. Multicast and reliable. That needs to be run on server reliable. Um, let's go with this and this and through you and this. Change this to two and red. We don't want to reinit pose. What that means is whenever you actually carry out this event, it resets you back to your beginning part of your idle animation or whatever you were doing. I don't want it to change our pose whenever we're actually teleporting. So again, we're just going to copy how that one was done, which was custom event, go red team. And that needs to be run on server. And come on, Red Team. have to do a rebuttal basically a return back to normal so what I'll do here is for my player I need to create two more variables which is going to be default mesh well we'll just leave it with one we need a skeletal mesh well 
save and we're going to use that as our default um, SK mannequin so again we're just going to reset we have our default default is would normally be saved by going through your your save game and things like that so we'll do add the custom event reset uh, no, we need client reset mesh so what we're wanting to do is of course replicate that we want to we don't need to worry about teams we just want to get a reference to our mesh set skeletal mesh to our default mesh uncheck reinit pose so that that's all it's really going to do is just change our mesh back to our default we don't need anything else we'll just go in here and some event reset mesh run on the server we want it to be reliable on this because we're doing meshes still stuck at multiplayer replication but you know I just need to work on doing more of it just so I um, can get the little things done faster and what I should be doing is so this mesh changes so that's all in one location here so our player is good so we've got our go green team and that's good we're, we're good with that so now I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that red team underscore BP and all this is good but we need to change that go red team and that one is good go our base pad red material compost save Oh, excuse me so sorry did I forget to connect you in thank you princess so see red um, we're on the wrong side go over here and we'll top drop that in here our destination we can set to be the same thing as this guy so I'll go here right click copy select here and right click and paste and destination it will bug me if I don't do this destination is going to be new category destination And the only thing that's going to do is when you select it, it's just going to say destination here as well instead of default. It's a very minor thing, but if you're trying to run a clean map, then yeah, it's the best way to do it. So destination set, destination set. Verify that it works. All right, it did not work. Um, what did I forget um, 
Default mesh is fine. Go red team. Oh, we're here. Um, it's fine there. Client red team, client red team. Oh, um, we need to change how that works. We don't necessarily need this, or do we? Huh. Um, we didn't put that in the green one. So we'll we'll just add it in here. Set team to one. Totally redundant. Um, don't need it. But because I did it differently. Um, set team to because we're just doing a, a direct mesh swap totally wasn't necessary so if we go to red now yeah see I, I don't I don't need that Don't need that. Don't need that or that. We're just direct changing our mesh. That's all we need to do. crowdfunding a project kind of do um, um, crowdfunding for project yes and no do green team green team reset mesh yes fine um, yeah, we didn't need that team functionality thing there. So yeah, we're on green team. And this should do fine now. Yeah, okay. We, I guess, do need to set that. But we can set that in here. We'll set team for green. one and then for red team we will set team two but we don't need to do a check there we're just trying to change our freaking mesh and set our team all right so those are good we're all right and i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time and Return. Um, exit. Team. Screw it. Arena. And base pad will take back to Well, we don't want world grid material. What was the actual material in here? Base shape material. So, base shape. Well, um, base. I won't see it.
basic shape. Dumbass. Um, yeah, okay. We don't need that. We could drag off from here and reset mesh. Teleport, we should be good on that. And set that in there, go for our destination of zero 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 one hundred. Not that it really matters, but so if we come over here and teleport into the arena this way. We're on red team. We leave. We go back to no team. We go back over here. Enter in. We're on the green team. So that puts the arena set for picking your team for the arena. and leaving the arena. So the main point for this is when we're changing our materials, our meshes here, it, and developing our team and setting team one, team two, then we can actually go in there and set up a team versus team combat system that players can just simply walk over the, the walk into the correct teleport pad and go directly into the arena. could even do a spectator, which means you can go to a certain area, have a teleport set to go wherever you want. Entirely up to you, but for right now I just wanted an arena area that will allow for combat. Alright, so those work. This map has no prison cell, not worried about that for the functionality. We have testing, let's go ahead and test it in multiplier. All right, so this is client. Client's going to go over here, go to red team. And I know you can't see the server, but server's going to come in here on green team. Yay, and there was much rejoicing. And then we'll go back over. And we'll send red Fred to go back over. Meshes are changed. We're all good to go. Client has no ability to do admin mode, but yeah, the server can go into um, popo mode, yeah. and then can also go back off duty, or plain clothes, delightful. So, the next thing I actually want to work on is I need to have some mode of a fun mode. Uh, whether it's straight up combat arena, uh, the point of where I'm trying to go with this is to refine where I was going with the infection game mode. Where it's essentially <laughs> like a a version of tag where you know red team versus uh, green team uh, or infected versus cured um, or normals or whatever so the normies go in there and they attack the uh, the infected with a cure and whenever they the infected gets cured they're now on the cured team so if it's two versus two and you heal or cure the infected, now it's three versus one. You lose that person from your team and you get switched to the other team. So what I'm wanting to do is, short term, 
before I start adding any animations or anything else like that in here, uh, I'm just going to do a simple projectile. And what I want to try to do is, and I've never tried this before, and I'm going to try it, and if it doesn't work, then whatever. Um, as I, we're going to go in here and create a new folder, weapons, and we'll do a new folder for pro projectiles. Now, I'm going to create a new blueprint actor. Dart. And what I want to do with this is actually create a dart that is essentially a hypodermic syringe, whatever. So when you throw it, 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 it cures the, the person. So we're just going to go ahead and create a... Um, until I actually have something else better in here. No, let's do... That's fine. I don't know which way it's going to go yet. So let's go ahead and give it a projectile movement. A thousand. Yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, projectile gravity scale. 0.5. And sadly, I don't know how it's going to work. So we're going to just spawn one in here. Okay, it's the wrong direction. Kind of figured it was. We're about making it delightful later. It just needs to be functional. Um, another thing is block all dynamic. Simulate physics. Yeah, that didn't work too well. Let's try increasing the um, the speed, but I think we're not going to have much luck with that. Yeah, let's get rid of that physics. That's what's actually um, killing us right now. So, speed's okay. Um, so we'll do it in this mode here, so that you have to use your crosshair. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is creating another over-the-shoulder crosshair system. But for now, I like doing this. Go into that mode, bang, 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 do your thing. So, we'll leave that as it is. Go into, and we have this, so we don't need to do anything else just yet. We just need to get it to shoot. And if I view change, all right, we'll use it off the show cross here. Um, All right, so custom event, client, throw, dart. Gonna have to change that. Um, when spawning things, um, I have to remember what I was doing with this before. 
Because if you do it wrong, you're, you're actually going to spawn, the client's going to spawn two instead of one. So I'll come back and I'll fix that part later. Um, just got to get it rolling. Uh, spawn actor from class. And I'm just going to use the FPS camera. Get world transform. Launch our dart. What I would like to do, and I don't know how to do it, I'm going to have to figure it out, is how the hell can I get it to actually stick? Like, it, play Minecraft, you get shot with an arrow. You can see the arrow at the location that it hit you. So, like to be able to make it a sticky event. So, it will attach to whatever it hits. But let's get it shooting first. So, we're going to spawn it. I'm sure I'm going to have to add more functionality in there. Um, throw dart. Again, I will fix the replication correctly. Once I get it actually shooting the dart. Um, Land, throw, dart. Then we will do left mouse button and we're going to get show crosshair. So it's only going to work if our crosshair is out, and our crosshair is only going to be out if we're in first-person view. So, from there, we're going to throw dart. Alright, so that, that was the uh, default need to get rid of. Bang. So it works. We're shooting darts. Yeah, kind of a nerf arena. No, I'm not a nerf guy, so. So you gotta deal with the arc. And another thing for now. Um is that a lifespan? of the dart do 10 seconds so the dart will actually go away we need to get rid of that one out of the map now oop, my bad that's something else I'm going to have to fix Now, of course, you don't want your, your players to sit here and just flood spam. So, you see they're, they're deleting themselves. So, what we can do here is... Can fire... Let's move these down... put our branch in, can fire, and if it's true, then we'll be able to actually launch our dart. So what we'll do here is, um, we can leave that in there, set can fire to fault, um, you know, actually, I want to move this around because I think that's actually going to be a problem. Let's 
Set cannon fire default. Delay. Nope. Um, I'll plug that back in in just a minute. I, I, it, it probably should go right there. Let's do half second delay. And then we can fire again. You can adjust the delay for as much as you want. Um, for how fast you want your, your players to shoot. Um, you can probably set a, um, a variable to it and tweak the variable as needed. So, turning off the ability to shoot, we're waiting a half second, and then we're resetting the ability to shoot again. So, yeah. But, we need to turn that on by default. So, but they're going to go through the ground, and I don't want them to go through the ground. And the other thing is, did I screw up their application? <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure I probably did. So we're going to put our client right here, and throw a dart. Now, here's the thing is I'm aiming directly at the target. But it doesn't show the direction that my character is looking in. So let's actually look with the... Um, you can see how the, the server is spinning around. You can see which way they're facing. that's fine but on the client's view well that did not help so here's the client look on the left that's actually the client that we're looking at if I'm run towards him and fire that's one thing but I'm spinning around and you can see that um, does not translate. But you notice as I'm looking around with the um, the server, the client can actually see the um, the replication of which way the, the player is looking. So that's something that I'm going to have to address. Never really fully did that correctly. So I'm going to move the server back off again. Our client So you see the darts. See, we're not using a line trace. We're actually using a projectile movement. So the dart itself. projectile, dart, um, the cube, it has no physics. It, it has no collision. Um, see this block all dynamic here. Um, however, it does not have a physical collision to it. So it's actually going into the ground. So see, it's still hitting the ground and just going through. That's kind of creepy seeing it coming right at you like that. Um, however, it's not actually accurate. The camera doesn't seem to be 
I mean directly at the head, but it looks like it's going to my left or the shooter's right. But um, the client aiming directly at the head, and the server sees him shooting off in a different direction. So that's got to be fixed 100%, um, or else it's just not going to work. Um, See, whenever I do the view change, uh, do, 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 view change, use controller rotation yaw is true, and here it's false. So whenever I go into first person view, I'm using the controller rotation yaw, and that's allowing me to actually, let's go into single. So I'll do this. Now, whenever I move my mouse, it moves my whole entire player around, which is fine, because um, I'm not using an aim um, space or blend space or anything like that. So having it turn the character around like that is okay. It gets the job done. But it doesn't replicate correctly for the client. So I'm going to have to... Resolve that issue, and I might have to actually perform replication on this somehow um, by setting up whatever I go into this. I need to be able to replicate this so that the the controller itself is actually replicated. The the controller rotation yaw is actually going to be visible. It doesn't matter in this view because you can actually just pan around, which is kind of cool. But when you go into that first-person camera, it's actually taking control of the the, the character. So, got to fix that. And set up the replication. But for now, we have the darts. They're going out. What I will do is work on how I'm going to get them to actually attach to the player. Um, so we're going to need to do this as an event. Whenever the dart itself hits, um, I don't have any kind of collision on it, like a, a box collision or capsule collision or anything like that. Um, may have to add that to it. Was, you know, more like a, an attached to component. Uh, if I was doing just a straight line trace um, and zero gravity for the darts and that kind of stuff, and you know, can potentially do that, I can go over here to my projectile movement and change gravity to zero. So that means wherever I am aiming. It goes straight and never changes. So it's going to be straight and level all the time. With no deviation. So I could attach a line trace to that as well. And get the impact point. You can see the darts are disappearing because I put a lifespan on them. So they don't just clog up the freaking world with 10 billion freaking darts. So with these, one thing I will have to add is can fire to true, and then whenever you go back through here, can fire would be false. So when you're in a, the standard normal area, you won't be able to do any PvP whatsoever, but then when you do said I'm going to go in here, I'm on green team, and go in here, everything's great, I can shoot and kill and all that kind of stuff, but as soon as I leave, PvP's off. So it basically turning off your ability to apply damage is, is what I'm, I'm dealing with. <sighs> Let's actually go into the player and for this throw dart mechanism 
gonna fire off a line trace. I'm gonna see if I can put it in its own separate custom event. Fire trace without having to replicate this part of it. It actually just would be done as part of that. So do a line trace by channel. And go through the usual rigmarole. The FPS camera. We're going to get world location. Plug that in to our start. And we're going to need to move you. Get forward vector. And float vector times float, and we're going to set this at 5000. And then we're going to add these two together vector plus vector. Plug that into the end. We don't need to trace, you know, to see the line. We'll do break hit results. And I want hit actor needs to be the player. I'm just wondering here if I can do a spawn actor from class. And we want dart. Uh, no, we can't use the dart. Blueprint class actor. Stuck dart. And it just needs the cube. Point five, point one. Ninety, we will figure out the rest of it later. We just need a something. Um, so we'll do stuck dart. We need to make our transform here. And location, impact point, rotation, we're not going to change. Uh, that's going to be a problem. And that's going to be a problem. Oh, shit. What do we do for that? It was one five one point one point five point one. Actually, let's try something here and let's promote this to variable stuck dart ref and then get that. Get mass, no, we just want to get the regular scale. Get world scale. Get 
plug that. I should return back the normal uh, scale. Uh, I don't know. Get world rotation. Um, it's going to be backwards. So I would have to actually create another variable there so that it would be inverted so the dart isn't going in backwards. Or we could just turn the model around backwards unless we actually have a dart. So we've got to transform based off the impact point, the rotation of which it was fired, and the, the original scale of the dart. Absolutely think this is not going to work. I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. Alright, client. You be my target. It's hitting there, however, the dart. Block all. Yeah, see, this is something that's totally fidget around with. I've never tried this before. I don't know how to work this out. Um, component replicates, I guess. Um, we wanted to create an overlap event. Um... We need it to actually, once it hits the player, we need it to go away. Um, let's actually delete this. Go to our cube. And... Add a box collision to it. We don't want you attached to it. We just want you there. Need you bigger. It doesn't really matter all that much. That would be like two point five. We just want it a little bit bigger. On component begin overlap. Let's see if we can screw this up even worse. Um, so it hits our player. Let's see, we're doing the, the fire trace. We're doing it off of this. Um, actually, let's get rid of 
Oh, shit. Um... Spawn actor. Damn. Uh, we want this there to be an event here. We want this to be the event. Spawn the actor. I'll figure this out one way or the other. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch me lose my shit trying to, to figure out something. But... We want it to spawn on the player where it gets hit. Um, our mesh should be set to block all dynamic. Yep. All right. Sacrificial lamb here. So it's actually not hitting the player. It looks like it is. And the shooting the foot, but yeah, there's just some weird shit going on. That's something that I'm gonna have to figure out. Um, get rid of this. This is just getting me nowhere. Kiss my ass, go away. So we're shooting the dart, that's fine. Um, can fire, so we'll just go back here to this. And set can fire to true. So we can shoot when we're on the teams. reason why I wanted numbers on there is um, so that later on um, for scorekeeping. Team 2 gets um, 10 points, they win, whatever, you know. Reset and mash, and we are going to set can fire to false. So when we go there, can fire is off by default. So now, uh, let's go back to single. Nothing. But if we come in here, we can shoot at darts. We leave the arena, no longer shoot. Let's go in on green team, verify. And here we go. Leave the arena. No longer shoot. Good. All right. That's a start. Just from spitballing ideas like this, the whole dart concept. Uh, for now, I'll probably change it up to where. You have to be within a melee range, and it's just a manual stick. So, as you're running around, you have to basically play tag, run over, and hit somebody. You know, punch me, hit me. So, I'll set up an animation system for that, so that when you do it, it actually does a punch animation. But I have to figure out the rotation deal on replicating the player rotation that's going to be my number one thing that I need to get fixed first and then worry about the other stuff. Um, completely rebuild this entire UI. Instead, I'm, I'm going to have it set to where um, whenever you're actually in this, it's going to take up a third of the screen. 
because the admin, there's just too many things that I, I want to be able to have inside here. And one of the things that I was testing earlier was, which I'll actually go ahead and open the other project short term, quick glance. Although I am going to abandon this, this project and restart everything only because, like I said earlier, really, if you start putting in all the different assets, it's cool, I love it, it's great, but you begin to lose focus on all the cool stuff. You know, you go, oh, look, oh, I can add this asset in, or I can add that asset in there. Uh, don't restore. Maps. So, just a quick walk around. And some of these features will be retained. Most of these will actually be retained and just remade. Uh, so as you're moving around town, you'll start seeing some more NPCs now. Um, gassy grainy. Hey, because farts are funny. Um, park benches. All of them in the town will be set up to where there's two places to sit down in each one. And it is correctly replicating. I do have to fix one thing on it, though, so you can't sit on top of somebody else. That's the only thing i got to do, and that'll be done. Um, the medic feature will be in. I just haven't done it yet. Um, you'll see I'm going to remake everything including the map that I started working on and I hate to do it because I spent a lot of time working on this freaking map getting it, not this one but getting that map ready and it's not even close to being done yet it's just not even all the terrain is there yet but you'll have vendors with much better um, interfaces than that the hunger and thirst has been tweaked a little bit ATMs work, but will be much nicer. Um, excuse you. Um, yeah, there, there's a time delay, so the the people they they just don't fart normal. Now it's reset. I can go back into it again, just like that. The little, you know, emitter and sound and the... Ooh, so sorry. But the park benches and the bus stops will all have seating working, which they do now, but... I'm not so sure about these yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to use anything on, on the picnic tables. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. But I'll have to go around and see the uh, the positioning is not correct on all of them. But they all work the way they're supposed to. I just got to make the adjustments to them. Excuse you. Um, I removed the ATM that was here. It was poorly scaled to cover up a window there. It just didn't fit correctly to the map. So, test map one thing, but Bartsville, the map that I started, and it's going to suck that I'm, yeah, I'm not going to worry about rebuilding the lighting on it. So, we'll just quick tour around. You know, you can sit down on the park benches. Uh, you got ATMs over here. You got a police station. You got the different patrol cars. You want to farting people. ATM... Different patrol cars, just random cars. Physics was turned on on the ambulances by accident for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, and that's the hospital. So that's where you would come over here and go see the doctor. Since this is a whole new map, I decided to rework the prison location. And I'll show that here in just a moment. But it took a, a nice little while to create... I'll do a fly around of the town the buildings, 
that's made up of a lot of freaking pieces. You see, it doesn't look like a whole lot on the map right now. You can still see that there's a lot of area that is not even finished. You fall through the world. There's no water stick it in right there. For some reason, that rail doesn't have a collision. But all the the big apartments over here have that little underground area. I was playing around with the concept area over here for putting in water, like maybe a port section, maybe bring in some ships or whatever. And, you, know, you can see through the sides because it's, you know, there will be ground, but like I said, this map's going to go away. Shame, too. Um, but if you do fall into the water, don't have any water effects turned on yet, no swimming animations added. But short term, you can still jump and get out. Um, turned on the collisions for these things. So you can't walk through, can't fall out that way, but you can fall out by stepping off of there. It's just it's not done yet. Because farts are funny. So, yeah, and it's going to suck. I mean, this is actually, doesn't look like it, but several hours worth of work just setting up the streets, changing them about a half dozen times, not happy with half of what I put out, and... I am so set on symmetry that it, it killed me to have that offset pond over there. So, well, maybe I can make it larger, do the bridge going across it, and you know what? Spend all this time working on making the map look nice instead of actually um, working on features. So, this was um, just to kind of show this one right here. See, there's nothing here. Go your admin server stuff dropping bombs and only one spawned boom does a shitload of damage so the point here and it wasn't working as well as intended I can't just sit there and spam the button you see I've got five different random spawn locations so when you're in and you decide you could do a bomb spawn It's purely random. And yes, they do damage. Come on, do more than one. Okay, you did that one. And that one. So, and if you die, so far, there's no death animations in here yet. It just resets you. I got so worked up on all this crap and completely got sidetracked from what actually matters. Um, we're starting to work on the, the phone. Um, and we'll actually have an animation for now. I, I thought I had a texting animation. I'm going to have to find one. I, I'm pretty sure I've got one. But the only animations I have was for um, using a cell phone, talking on the phone. So I'm either going to have to use that or find a texting animation so that when the player is using their phone or an admin is using their admin control panel, it looks like they're actually holding a, a phone or a tablet. So it basically would just enlarge that. So to make it look like they're actually doing what they're doing, so there's some life to the animations, but get too sidetracked on less important things and not focused in on what actually matters. Building the fun. I, I really got to get the features working first before I start working on the pretties. So I want to get back to that. So if you guys got some other options, then I'm going to get out here. But um, if you guys got some more... Um, functions and features and things like that you would like to see in this project uh, let me know in discord um, I need to start working on some features I'm gonna work on this the, the dart throwing thing a little bit at a time but I'm not gonna let it kill me right now I'm, I'm gonna come up with another alternative and I'm going to do the um, 
the infection mode, the infected mode, or basically it's a, a team-based tag or whatever you want to call it. So essentially whenever you're running around, you're on green team and you stab or club or whatever a member of the red team, you convert them over to the green team. And in the arena, what I'll have to do also is create some more functionality that um, whenever I go from the normal room to the combat room, either have a widget on the HUD show up that will actually show the score or actually put a billboard on the wall saying red team three, green team two, whatever. Uh, so there will actually be a scoreboard to look at or if you guys think I should do it as part of the HUD so you actually see right on the, I, I'm pointing, but uh, you can't see what I'm pointing at, but <laughs> up here on the top of the screen um, show the, the score or just show it on a billboard on, on the wall. Let me know. Um, thanks for watching. If you jo uh, join me for this little spitball session, just impromptu stream, but we'll have a better stream coming up tomorrow night, and I'll have a lot more to show. Thanks for watching. We'll see.